scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. <laughs> Champagne gang, Fizz fam, confidants. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of The Secrets Spill. Come on in, y'all. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm the Empress, and you are joining me for grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, baby, come on in. Grab you one of those glasses of bubbly on your way in. Say hi to a few people. Kick your feet up on one of those chase lounges. And let's get ready to get into it. But before we do, go ahead and take those glasses and raise them high in the air. It is time for our dose of empowerment. Are you ready? Today we're talking about focus. Yeah, focus is your superpower. It's the lens that sharpens your vision, the anchor that grounds your dreams, and the fuel that drives your purpose. When distractions tempt you to stray, remember that every moment of focus is a step closer to your destiny. Stay locked in, stay committed, and let your focus carve the path to greatness. Repeat after me. I am unwavering in my focus, unstoppable in my pursuit, and destined for success. Here's to you, Confidant, for you are worth it. Let's toast. So for today, we're taking a trip to court. Yeah. And not just any court, it's custody court. So today we have two cases. And this is why you have to be careful with who you have children with. Cases like these two are the reasons why we need the Managing Your Ship series that we will be continuing on tomorrow. Make sure you pull up. I would say 10 p.m., but my uploads have been taking a little longer than normal. So 10.30 p.m. Central at the latest. But this is why. Because we get so excited and turned on by each other in the moment that we just want to fulfill an urge, scratch an itch. But who stops to think about, if I screw this person, I could end up pregnant? They could get me pregnant? Is this someone I want to procreate with? How will they be as a parent? What values will they teach my children? Is this the example of a man I want my sons to see? Is this the example of a woman I want my daughters to see? What will our family structure look like? Will there even be a family structure? All y'all care about is getting off. And again, I say, you always have freedom of choice. You don't always have freedom of consequence. You don't get to choose who you get pregnant by when you open your legs. It's already been proven that contraceptives are not 100%. So anytime you lay down, there's the potentiality of creating a fetus. And some of y'all so immature, you don't even know how to co-parent, even if you can't be together. You don't know how to sit down and have a conversation like two mature adults. Oh, because you're not two mature adults. You were two hormone-infused individuals that saw a moment and decided to take it. With my oldest daughter's father, when I had her, I told him, I don't care about your money. Your daughter needs your time. I got my daughter, but she still needs you. See, children don't know anything about child support. All they know is this is my parent. I want my parent. So I told him, make sure you give her your time. We got the rest covered. When she was grown, I went back to court and dropped the back child support so he wouldn't go to jail. Because I was never in it for punishing him. My child has nothing to do with me and his relationship. And me and his relationship has nothing to do with him and her relationship. Probably should have kept it going, but you're no good to her from prison. With my oldest son's father, I told him, I don't want you to be an every other weekend dad. He told me, all right, let me go think about it. 
about it and I'll come back and let you know. So he came back to me and said, how about this? I will get him Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every other weekend. From the moment I stopped breastfeeding, when my son was five months old, his dad got him Tuesday, Thursday, and every other weekend. He would get all of his clothes, wash them, fold them, and send them back. And we weren't even together. All it took was a conversation between two mature adults. You don't use children as pawns. You don't use children to hurt the other parent. What's wrong with y'all? See, this is what happened when granny went away. And I'm not talking about these new age grannies with stilettos, booty shorts, and still in the club. I'm talking about the ones who walked around with the moo-moos on, playing church music with a crooked wig, sat around watching Days of Our Lives all day. Come on now. But all y'all care about is frucking. Y'all hitting licks, all right, right between someone's legs, and you think it's cute, bragging about how many bodies you have, but not even prepared to take care of the baby that may be produced from that body. And that's why we're so hard on women. That's why we tell women, protect your treasure box so it doesn't become a trash can for someone to dump in and walk away after they've gotten their release. Because the baby goes home with you, mother. The baby becomes your responsibility, whether or not he decides to be involved. This is the part that we miss. When we listening to Sexy Red, when we're listening to all this music, and all it talks about is sex, 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 with a few bitches thrown in in between. They don't even respect you enough to call you by your name, to refer to you as lady. Do you know why? Because they don't see you as lady. They see you as exactly what you're throwing out. They see you as objects, sex toys, sex doll, a means to an end. And that's why this is a problem. I ain't got the type of pussy. If you looking for brand new, like never been used pussy, I'm not the girl for you. I ain't even gonna lie. I ain't that, cause I ain't the bitch that's gonna sit up here and be like, I haven't fucked and unless I haven't fucked, I'm never telling you that story. Don't ask me no question like that. When the last, last week, the other day, that's me. The other day, I just fucked them in, that's me. The, I'm never finna be, oh no, I don't do stuff. No, I be sucking dick with both hands, slob and everything. I be doing all that shit. Like, I'm not the girl that, no, I don't, no. I be gagging. I'm a nasty bitch, Lil' Kim, all that shit. I'm Maya Angelou mixed fucking. A nigga done tied me up before. I done got spit on, all type of shit. I think a nigga hit me in the head with a horn one time. A bitch done did all type of nasty ass, freaky ass, crazy ass shit. Nigga, I ain't no motherfucking saint. And I ain't finna act like one just to get you. I been fucking. I you wanna fuck with me or not? I, no, nigga, I been fucking. I was fucking before I met you. Niggas be, cause I know a lot of niggas. And I probably fucked some of them, so what? I know a lot, okay, and I probably fucked some of them. So now what? Is we still going to breakfast, nigga, or not? I'm tired of that. That's like you going in a restaurant and you like, I ain't gonna eat in here cause other niggas that ain't in here. What the fuck? Nigga, it's put And somehow, this generation thinks this is cute. She real. She honest. I fucks with that. But shut up. I, oh, when did we lose the ability to keep stuff in the bedroom? When did it become okay for your sex life to be put on display? When? Oh, because this is the kind of conversation that fills up your DMs. Is that it? Because this is the toxic ish that gets all the views. Is that it? There's a reason why I stopped covering so much celebrity and reality TV. Do you know why? The toxicity. I know how to get monetized if I really wanted to. But it would come with a crowd that I don't want on my channel. The crowd that justifies toxic behavior. The crowd that justifies utilizing your treasure box as a trash can. There used to be a time when girls bragged about opening businesses, doing nails, doing hair, doing makeup, getting a degree, finishing school. Now, all you see is scattered ass. Sexy red posting videos in the doctor talking about her coochie stink. When did this become okay? Because see, what you don't understand is this kind of behavior potentially leads to stuff like this. Well, okay, so it's two things. So I'm trying to get them to the dad because I'm not going to lie y'all. I'm over it. I do everything by myself. And I've been doing it for years since I was 15. I'm literally 27. I'm about to be 28 this year. Still nothing like being 
They don't help. They don't send no Christmas cards, birthday gifts, presents, no, literally not a damn thing. And as well, okay, my oldest son is 11 and my daughter's is about to be three. So you mean to tell me out of three years and out of 11 years, y'all lazy ass still ain't come up yet? Okay, well, y'all take the kids and I'm going to worry about me, focus on school and get my shit together because not. It's time for somebody else to, you know, step up and do something. I'm tired. Like every time, like time. I'm. I've been doing it by myself since I was 15. I'm done. I'm over it. I'm in two different colleges. I'm working. Um. I'm over. I'm overwhelmed. I was just. It's. I'm done. I really am. I'm just done. I just want to learn. I just want to be able to focus on me, my school. My careers, my jobs, I, I just want to focus on me. Don't worry, I absolutely love and adore my kids. They're so beautiful and intelligent, but I don't want them. I'm try I've been trying literally for two, two, three months to give them to the dads. Literally nothing. Then you got one of the dads is like, oh, <sighs> y'all, I kid you fuck not. I told this man, you, it's time for you to step up and do something like, you know. So then he's like, oh, it sounds like, um, I, like, I literally told him, I said, I'm just trying to better myself. I said my career is low key on the is low key on the rise and shit. I'm gonna look and say to my kids, so you can go and chase your dreams because your dreams are starting to come true. Why would I want to sit there and let your dreams come true? Like for one, that's the most hating ass shit a, a somebody could ever say. Literally, anybody know who Kendrell Eaton is or he go by Kike? That's who I'm talking about. Y'all, this one this one dumb bitch Akira on this live because me dad, if I knew that's her baby dad was bitch i would have hello i would not have been talking to him because bitch you're you're mad that he's my baby dad okay you can have him back i never wanted to be my baby dad i just stuck and i couldn't abort so to help contact these goddamn dads so they can come and get kids because like i said i'm done so you know but if by five o'clock i cannot get the dads to man and help i'm not gonna lie i'm going to drop them off at the fire station I've already contacted the fire station because I didn't know how the whole shit worked or whatever. Because I know I know you could drop off like newborn babies and shit and not get in trouble. Or I don't know if you get in trouble or not. I don't even give a if I do get in trouble. I don't care. I'm done. So anyway, I act on it because I'm I'm tired of doing so. Like literally, I got all the kids. Twenty literally twenty seven. I got twenty four seven. I don't have nobody to be watching them. JFS keep my child care. The dads help. The the, the grandmas is dead beats. I can't wait to see this one bitch. I mean, you to tell her to be a dad or or I don't know. If y'all wanna take them, because look, y'all can get benefits and everything. Um honestly, actually better yet shit, my daughters might qualify for SSI. But I'm not playing. I'm just like, I have to know you. I'm saying if you feel like you wanna take and foster my kids or some shit like that, this is me openly asking for help. I need help. I got a lot of shit going on right now. So <clears throat> with that being said, uh if you want to openly foster my child my children or whatever. I have to know you. you yes we have to go through the whole little process or whatever but i still want to see my kids i still want to provide for my kids and everything but yeah no if you want like i said if you want to foster them you're more than welcome y'all will get benefits if you if you can file for food stamps my daughter's qualified for ssi um it's a couple different things my son's dad is dead as and he ain't coming back in fact i, I still gotta go today and spit on that nigga's grave and send the video to his mama anyway but anyway yeah i gotta um after i do that shit, but my son's dad is dead He's not coming back. So my son's dad, I mean, my son survived, uh, he, he, you know, he qualifies for a uh, survivor's benefits or whatever. It really don't matter, but, um, cause this is- how you're overwhelmed. I'm cause sorry. I love them and, th and this is hard. Like, and this is, this is killing me. Yeah. But it's for the better. Like it's, yeah. it's for me to get my life better and focus on my schooling, my career, my health. Number one, my health so I don't die. Cause I can't do shit for them if I'm, if I'm dead. I can't stop stressing if I don't have help, you know? Mm. So and it's like, that. and it's like the dads didn't want to help me. They wanted to see me beat. I done lost everything so many times. See what I mean? See what I mean? Let me help you with something. These are the things that you go through as a mother. Do you know how many jobs I lost because babies got sick? And I had to take off work to make sure my children were okay. And the jobs didn't understand. So I had to find another one. For years, when my children were growing up, I only did temporary jobs. Do you know why? Because just in case something happened with my children, 
I had a little bit more flexibility because I knew I would get another assignment because of how good I was at my job. No one's there to help you. Well, you knew that with the first one, but you continue to have children and you had a conversation with your children to let them know you were giving them up and y'all still don't see a problem with this overly sexualized generation, this overly sexualized society where everything is about it's your body. But see, these are the things that we don't stop and think about when we're screwing because we just want to have a good time. But now that good time is turned into tears. And one day your son is going to see how you disrespected his deceased father and grandmother. The children's grandparents don't owe you anything. They raised their children. The minute you decided to pop one out, that baby became your responsibility and your responsibility alone. You don't get to stop and figure out your life when you have children. Because now it's about providing one for them. It's no longer just about you. So we're going to get into these two cases for today. I want you to drop in the comments as you're watching these two cases. Let me know who you think is at fault in these situations. Do you feel like the judges handled these cases appropriately? Drop in the comments and let me know. Let's talk about it. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, Brown versus Kennard. Here. All right, get down with your right hands for me. Yes, swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for a TPO is the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. Are right, you have any witnesses, Miss Brown? Mr. No, I don't. I'm sorry, Mr. Brown. Miss uh, <clears throat> Miss Kennard, do you have any witnesses? Um, not physically. I have a witness, but it's only over the phone, so I don't know if that counts. Is anybody on Zoom that your witness, ma'am? No. Okay. All right. So go ahead, Mr. Brown. Tell me what's going on. Yes. Uh, uh, I got the TPO order uh, from some incidents that occurred. Uh, the most latest one I have that occurred on June 7, where uh, me and Perlia was having a disagreement. And uh, she ended up grabbing a knife from the kitchen. And she ended up chasing me with it and, you know, pretty much attacking me with the knife. I got video uh, footage of it. And uh, I had to run out the house and go through the basement at one point. At that time, I took some video evidence of, of, of a cut on my finger. Uh, made it back up. She chased me again at, at another point. I ended up getting a knife from her. And uh, that, that was the end of that day. I did not call, you know, contact police. And another incident that month <clears throat> happened on June the 7th. Where, we, you know, uh, she was just being verbally abusive, you know, saying things like nobody likes me, you know, my sister, my dad doesn't like me. Uh, she wish I was dead, you know, stuff like that. Uh, she wish I died in my sleep, you know, things like that. And she also jumped on me and attacked me uh, that time as well. And I got video evidence of that. Uh, so that's kind of why I'm seeking this, this protective order. So tell me what it is. Um about the knife incident what, um, what exactly happened oh uh, we was having a disagreement we, we, we talk a lot uh we were having a disagreement i believe i believe it was about you know uh you know it was probably concerning the child you know with her you know she's breast she's nursing breastfeeding it, you know doing marijuana and i you know i you know it's just <laughs> just a disagreement <laughs> And uh, one thing led to another, and she ended up grabbing a knife from the kitchen and uh, chasing me with it. She and she was up. telling me, don't call the police, stuff like that, you know, because she, you know, don't want to get the baby taken away, stuff like that. Did she end up stabbing you with it or? Uh, yes, I got some, I got some proof. Uh, she bit me on my chest. Uh, I, I do, I got probably two cuts on my right thumb. Uh, I had this, but like I got some type of cut across my chest that I, I got some uh, proof of, uh, some across my shoulder, you know, yeah. It wasn't, no, I, I didn't get, it wasn't anything that completely punctured through that I needed to go seek medical attention. It was more so first aid. Uh -huh. Yeah. Was she arrested? No, I did not contact police. All right. The, the only the time that I did contact police was when she broke down the bedroom door, 
And I have a police report of that. She did admit to that. All right. And then what had happened like the first part of June, June 7th, and happened May, May 2021? Yeah, June 27th. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, June 7th. Right. Yeah, like I said, she was, uh, I, I don't know how it started. It start, I, I really don't know because uh, they, they, they usually always start from disagreements, you know, and uh, it just is it led to uh, her verbally abusing, you know, just telling me things about, you know, how no one likes me. And, you know, I guess I guess assuming why we can't communicate properly. Mm-hmm. You know, she's justifying why we can't communicate properly, saying uh, no one likes me and no one you know, wants to listen to me. Nobody cares about you. I wish you were dead. You know, uh, she punched me, jumped on me, pulled my hair, you know, uh, even bumped even bump the child during the altercation. Uh, I, I actually, she had, she actually grabbed the knife during that time. The only uh, footage evidence I got of that is me actually hiding the knife so she can't see it, so she can't get it because I had got it from her before I could get any footage of that. Uh, I just, and, and, and now show me any of the footage. Yes, yeah, I, I can screen share. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm gonna share sound here. Share screen. Yeah, this is uh some pretty graphic stuff here. <laughs> so I'm just warning. You. Oh man. Stop! Hey, girl! Please stop! Can you hear anything? Uh huh. I'm Man, telling I you, put the phone oh, down right now. I'm stabbing. I'm sorry. You. I'm gonna go to jail anyways. Put it down. Girl, I'm not calling. You wouldn't let me call the police in the first place. Girl, stop! Stop! Please! 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 please. At that point, you see me going out the door, running out the door. You can see her through the window here, like closing the door and locking it. But I had the basement window open, so I got back in through the basement where I came and made this video. This, this is a cut for me blocking and also, I don't know. She a long gas punched me in the eye as well, but it's she get the f- what happened. Chest. My eye is still healing. You can see a bite mark. And you can see the big bite mark here. Chest here. From her teeth marks. She pulled me by my hair. Um, so that was that was June 27. Um June the seventh here. I started off, I, I didn't, you know, I just started, which, well, you know, He's getting there, and this is why I'm already. June 7th here. He's a boy, I'm And I pretty much kind of ran into the room to get the footage. And uh, you can see I cut the light off here. I didn't know what to do, really. She's coming in the room. She's coming in wrong, I'm gonna record this. Thank you. 
do, <coughs> bitch. I hope you do die. <laughs> That's what she says. She hope I do die. I was big. I didn't, I didn't feel like that. Cause just cause you was the father of my son, but nigga, you were evil motherfucker. You, were you hope evil I die. You hope you I die. Evil motherfucker. You I hope. I hope karma. You hope I, I hope karma lay his ass on you. That's what I hope. I hope karma lay his ass. That. On you. Die in my sleep. Die in my sleep. Without you, yep. Gonna sleep and die. Yep. You want me to die? Go ahead. Everything that you've put me and my son through. Everything that you've put me and my son through. Hell yeah, nigga. I don't want you to die. So that's what it's gonna take for me. I'm sorry. That's what it's gonna take. Well, let me go. I'm sorry. I don't want you to die, though. Do that. Do that. What you recording me? Let me see your phone. You recording me? You recording me? You recording me? Right. Don't nobody want to be around you. Don't nobody love you, nigga. Your own son barely love you, nigga. You don't even know the conversation me and Mason had, bitch. Mm. Don't even know. Don't even know the conversation me and your son had about you, bitch. He don't like you for real. He sees you all your bullshit. And you think he just like he did everything. I can't wait to get it. My son away from this shit. My son away from this shit. Stop! Stop! I had hit the knife at, at another point. I just grabbed it because I got it. I gave it all to him. I gave it all to him. Some, some clothes. Pearl, let me get out the door. See, at this point, I'm trying to. Let leave. me get out the door. Stop recording me. I want to get out the door. I didn't say I wanted to be recorded. Stop, you don't have stop to Stop recording me. Man, this, I don't record you. Stop recording me. I just want to leave stop. out the door. Stop. Pearl, stop. Man, Pearl. Man, stop. Pearl, leave me up. Man. Oh, my God, man. What's wrong? Look, he's finna cry. I hate you. Look what you're doing! You did this! You did this shit to me! Phone cut off. Uh, and this is where I was. I made it to the garage. Leave me alone, Pearl. Get off of me. Pearl. 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 Watch the baby. Pearl. Final Pearl. royale, huh? Final baby. royale, huh? Watch the baby. You recorded me, I'm giving you a show. You recorded me. You want me to get. You want me to die. Because you know I'm going to my baby home, guys. Man, you got the baby. You can't touch my baby. Man, you got the baby, man. Man, you got the baby, man. My for years, me and my baby, me and my baby. Me Bro, and my baby. get the baby, get my side. So, so at this point, this is just this is just footage from the rain camera around the say, You know, it's time stamp. Around that time, you pretty much see me leave the residence. I, I was able to uh, get out. You see me leaving in the car there. She did. I guess she didn't know where I was at, um, but we. I, at this point, I did not include my my you know, my son into this order because he's not legitimated right now. But I did. Uh, I did. You know, go ahead and seek an attorney, and I filed. I, you know, I sought for legitimation, and she has been served. And uh, that's what I, that's what I have here on the screen. All right. Go ahead, ma'am. I'll hear from you. Thank you. So um, as it as it has to do with that first video that he just showed on um, the first video that he showed when I was attacking him with the knife, I was attacking him because the entire night he had verbally, mentally and physically abused me the entire the entire night. He takes the phones so that I can't record him or whenever I do get a recording of him, he deletes it because he has total access of this phone, the iCloud, everything. I have five police reports filed on Mr. Brown from his physical abusement towards me. Every time I retaliate a little bit after after I, I take the abuse for five hours on end out, 
and I finally get fed up because I've been in a relationship with him for three years. I've been getting abused from, by him in all through the course of these three years of us being together. I have multiple, multiple witnesses also that are, that is willing to testify in, in this case that I just gave them the information. They will be getting on Zoom shortly. It's willing to testify in this case that Mr. Brown has over and over and over again, mentally physically abused me to the point where I have five five police reports. The reason why they're not in evidence is because the only phone that I have, he has access to and I can't download any apps. I could not even download this app to even be on court right now. I have no money, no car, and the only phone I have is, is underneath his control. He is a narcissist, real narcissist. We have a 15 year age difference. Since I've been with Mr. Brown, anytime I ask to First, he isolated me from my family. He isolated me from everything. Then he takes control of the phone, takes control of the finances. Then he wiggles it in my face like, oh, if you leave, then you're going to have nothing. That's the reason why I, I tried to, to, to co-parent and be with Michael Brown so long is because I, 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 I am now financially dependent on him. But in the course of our whole relationship, I am the one who has been providing for our son. I am the one who has by bought everything that he owns. But Mr. Brown, because he knew that he was going to put a restraining order on me because he didn't want me to put the restraining order on him first because I had just got out of the hospital on June the 13th because I had a topic pregnancy rupture. I went through surgery. After I got back out, after I got back out of surgery, the reason why I attacked him with the knife is because he kicked me in my stomach. He abused me all night because I was talking to a friend that he did not want me to talk to. So he abused me and my son all night, came in the room. I had barricaded ourselves in the room to try to keep him out, but he just would not stop. He took the phone, so I couldn't call the police. The only option that I have is to run to the neighbor's house and call the police at six o'clock in the morning, which I have done multiple times in these police reports, and I can give you all the case numbers. I was not able to submit them in evidence because I, I couldn't because I can't download Dropbox on my phone. Like I said, I don't really I don't have any other devices to do anything. I don't have I only have one family member down here. She's been at work every other day. I had to take my baby to the doctor. I haven't been able to to do that. So the reason why I attacked Mr. Brown on that first video is because I had just recently had surgery from a topic pregnancy rupture and he kicked me in my stomach. He also abused me the entire time. And what you guys see in those videos, each one of those videos is a reaction from the abuse every single time. And that that's 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 all I have to say. I have witnesses, I have five different police reports. Each of these police reports, two of them is from neighbors' houses where I had to call the police and I had to run out the house from his abuse. The police came and picked me up. I'll read them. Upon arrival, Mr. Brown stated that his, his child's mother damaged his property. This, this is when he said, I bust in the door. Mr. Brown also stated that he does not believe Ms. Kennar damaged the property on purpose, that it did not happen today or at the same time. Ms. Kennar stated that she did, she did damage the property, but it was only trying to get in the bedroom where her child was at, was at, was at. Ms. Kennard stated that she did damage the light fixture, but since it had got fixed, Ms. Kennard, basically all of these just state that he been taking the phone. He takes the phone. He stops me from calling the police. He deletes evidence, all the evidence. He deletes all the evidence, even all my receipts to show that I've been the one taking care of my son this entire time, his whole life. He deleted everything because he had access to do so with the, with, with the phone, the iCloud. I wasn't even able just to get on here to even defend myself in court a little bit because I couldn't even download Dropbox or Zoom because he has it on parental control. But that's what he does. He, he'll, he'll turn the Wi-Fi off in the house. He'll turn the phone on. I can't even call out. Only people that I can call is the police. And then he'll stop me from doing that by taking the phone or barricading me in the house. The abuse has been going on for three years and this restraining order is on me only because he thought that I was going to put a restraining order on him first. Because after I got out of the hospital, I stated to Mr. Brown, this is too much. It's too toxic. It's too much. If you cannot 
not put your hands on me in front of my son if you cannot give me basic respect, then I am going to put a restraining order in and you're not going to be able to see Messiah anymore. So what he did was that, no, we can co-parent. We can do this cordially. We don't have to go through the courts. I don't want you to ever to feel like I know I was wrong for this and this and that. We can do this cordially. So we made arrangements that I would move out. I would go back to Ohio because I have no family here in Atlanta, which he knows that's another reason why he prayed on me and that I wasn't able to always leave his house as fast because I don't have any barely any support here. So I, I also, a couple months ago, left Georgia to get away from him, took my baby to get away from the toxicity to start my life over. I was there for a month before Mr. Brown came down to Ohio asking to see his son, crying, saying he would go to therapy, he would go to counseling, all of this stuff because his son didn't, didn't even, wasn't paying attention to him, didn't really acknowledge him. So I said, okay, well, if you can go to therapy and we can go to therapy and we can be co-parents and we can, we can do this right, okay, I'll come back. I'll come back. I came back here and that's when all this other stuff then occurred after I came back here. So he put this restraining order on me to protect him, which that's what he's been doing this whole time. That's why he's been deleting the evidence. All I have for my evidence, for me, I don't have any videos or recordings because he deleted all of that. All, every time he deletes it, he takes the phone, he deletes it. He do, doesn't let me call the police. Only thing I have is five police reports and I have multiple, multiple witnesses. The neighbors are willing to testify. One time he picked us out on the side of the highway Ma'am, and I, and I literally got out. Manny, could we just take a moment and put Michael Brown in a breakout room, with me, please? Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hold on a second. I don't know if you want to move on to another case, but I'll just be done for a few minutes. Okay. Let's see. I think you're a co host, right? You can go. Okay. I put him in breakout room one. That's crazy. And it's crazy. He accumulated all of this evidence. Oh, go ahead. I think you can go. You're a co host, so go into one. This is crazy. Hold on. <laughs> Every week, you actually... Georgia, ma'am, are you in Georgia? Yes, right now I am still in Georgia. Okay, hold on one sec. Let me see when they get back. Hold on. Anything else from you, ma'am? Miss Brown? Excuse me. Miss Kennard, anything else from you? Where did Miss Kennard go? Ms. Kennard, anything else for you, Mr. Brown? Um, not right now. I can answer any questions. <laughs> anything else for you, Ms. Kennard? No, um, besides my witness, I have a witness in the um, Zoom now. Is she the one that has the um, that was smoking a cigarette and walking around with a um, the proxy? Okay. Yeah. That's my mom. She okay. has been, I've called her multiple fa FaceTime. She's been one of the main witnesses to all of the abuse. Okay. All right, where's she at? All right, ma'am, can you raise your right hand? You swear a firm testimony you're about to give in this petition for TPO is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. You have to untake yourself off mute, man. Your Honor, are you talking to me? Yep, yeah, you're the only one. Go oh, ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you. No, were not you. No, me. not you, Miss Ponte. The lady with the shower cap on. Or okay. Hair bonnet. Okay. Okay. There you go. All right. Tell me what you know about what's going on with Miss Kenyard. Okay. I'm Pearlia's mother, and I okay. live in Ohio. And since day one, this man has beat on my daughter. I have been on the phone where he has actually beat my daughter up, and I'm sitting here looking at my daughter. Then he will call me and start recording my daughter when she attack him. My daughter just had surgery. She had her fallopian tubes taken out. And this man punched my daughter in her stomach. This man has put my daughter through so much and my family through so much. I brought my, send my sons to get my daughter 
from Atlanta. She she came here to Ohio. He convinced her to come back. And soon as she get back, he started beating on her again. He only records what he wants to record. He don't record what he be doing to my daughter. I am so sick of this man and these games he plays. I've never in my life met a person like this. He put my daughter out on the road, butt naked. Kicked him out the house, her and my grandson. And he always talking about his son. You let your son get in the car without a car seat because you don't want to give it up because you mad because she left. Oh, you let your son be outside just in a diaper because you mad. He beats her constantly, but he'll record what he want to. Have you witnessed it firsthand, ma'am? My, I have it. My other daughter, she lives in Atlanta and she has come to get my, da my daughter from that house. It's been times that he was beating her and she would just like call me and I can hear it. The man has even been disrespectful to me after he didn't beat my daughter and I'm trying to talk to the man. He disrespects me. I'm I, I, I can't, I, I, I'm can't. tripping on this restraining order. She the one needed to be putting a restraining order on him. But no, she's young and she felt like she was in love. And he took advantage of that. He's too old to even be with her. I am fed up with this situation. I'm shaking now and I, I'm, I'm really upset for the games that he plays. He is so manipulative. I'm just, I'm just over this. He's so sneaky. I, I, I can't take it anymore. I, I can't. I, I, I can't. I've been begging her to get away from him. Stay away from him. I sent my sons to get her. She was here. He manipulated her to come back. And then the stuff started all over again. I'm getting phone calls. He doing this to me. And he in the background yelling and screaming and being really disrespectful. Calling her all out her name. Telling her she ain't this, she ain't that. I, I'm, mm, I'm going to calm down. This is the most disrespectful human being I've ever met in my life. And I'm done with this. It's, I pray that Pearl, you stay away from him. That is not a good situation for you or your child. At some point in your life, you will start listening to your mother. Let this go. Let it go. I Please. Think, I think we've lost her. I don't, I don't know where she went. She's not on Zoom anymore. She probably upset because I'm upset. But your honor, I'm oh my mother, my dead mother. I'm not going to lie about this. This man has been beating my daughter. And he only records what he wants to be seen. He has cameras all around his house. Crazy stuff inside the house. You get... Whew. This is the most narcissistic man I've ever met in my life. And I'm so afraid for my daughter. If nothing be done, just make sure she stay away from him. Uh, Judge, can we yeah. break real quick and I speak to Michael Brown? Okay, well, I think, I, I don't see her. I think she's gone. If y'all want to go back to the breakout room, y'all can. Yeah. Um, Mr. Brown, will you hit where it says breakout room, join, you're in room one. and hit. Ma'am, if, if you want to reach out to your daughter, see if she can jump back on the link, okay? That'll okay. get time to get back on. Uh, Michael, do you see where do you see where it says room one? It did not pop up yet. Okay. Go back down the perfect where it says breakout room. Yeah, and if you scroll oh. down where it says room one. Yeah, do you see it now? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. While y'all do that, I'm gonna until she gets back on, I'm gonna go ahead and try to knock out this other hearing real quick because I've got my last hearing that's on. <sighs> All right. It looks like uh, where did uh, Mister. Uh, 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 Mr. Cole, all down. Looks like uh, I think Mr. Brown was having some sort of internet issues or something. 
Yeah, he's back. I just think his camera is not being judged. All right. Uh, all right, Miss Kenyard, anything else you want to tell me? Uh, did you hear what your mom said? I can't hear you, ma'am. You're on mute. The phone had um, died. So I okay. didn't hear this shit. You have anything else you want to tell me? Um, other than the fact like he still has control over the, the phone and he like he just does his best to go out his way to hurt me. It's not even about our son. It's about hurting me, controlling me, having control. And if I don't do what he didn't sound like he want me to sound, then I have I have repercussions to pay. I have I have consequences. You have to submit. Pretty much. If I don't submit, then I have consequences. That's why I have this restraining order. That's why I, uh, more than just that. But all right, let's see. Is Mr. Brown, are you still having issues? Is he still having issues with his camera? You want to text him and see or whatever, Miss Jill? Do they be I'm, sorry, still judge. I'm sorry, I thought that may have been him, but it was it somebody else? What was the question? Do you know if he's still having issues with his camera? If he is, I can just continue to. Yeah, I think we should just continue it and move on to another case because I know he was having some issues with it. Okay, if he's having issues, I'll go ahead with this. I'm sorry, Ms. Kennard. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue with this other hearing I'm having really quickly. All right, okay. so as soon as Mr. Brown can connect with his camera, you and your mom can hold on. At this point, while they wait for the plaintiff to fix his internet issue, the judge decides to move on to another hearing. Then this happens. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. I have, um, I haven't finished my court case with the judge and I have police in front of me. So I really need to speak to the judge because I have, I have police trying to take my child away from me and I haven't even finished court. I'm waiting for the, the, the other person to come back on the phone and now the police is here to take my baby away. Let's see, uh, Mr. Brown. Yes. The police is right here. I don't know if I can, can I turn the camera? The police is right here telling me mm -hmm. that they're here to take my child away from me. And I haven't even finished to get no verdict in this court right here. I've been on the phone with you guys since 1220 this, this morning. I, I understand, ma'am. You're going to go ahead and give them the, Mr. Brown's going to get the child and you're, you're going to go show up back to court, file some sort of emergency uh, motion and get in touch with one of the other judges and appear in front well, of them. Sorry, Mr. Brown's going to keep your I child you. until you guys can get in front of another judge. Mr. Brown, go pick up the child. Until when? Yes, yes ma'am. You get in front of the other judge for the legitimation case, ma'am. Until the so a whole month? I didn't say a month. I said till you get in front of the other judge in the legitimation case. The legitimation case. already, that, that says it takes 30 days. We haven't even... Ma'am, call and understand. speak with the lawyer. Is... Ma'am, call and speak with the lawyer. There's He's one, two, three, four, five, six lawyers right He's here. He's not even legitimated, and now they can just Ma'am, take my there's baby one, away. two, three, four, five, six lawyers right here. Go speak with the lawyer. Mr. Brown, go. And this is Justice Howe. You haven't even told me no verdict in my case. You haven't I'm even telling you right now, ma'am, I'm putting this anything. in place. Your mental health status and the way you were acting on those videos and with that knife, with that child there, has me very concerned for his safety <laughs> and the safety of that child. Okay, so what about all the evidence that I told you? Ma'am, I'm I telling tell you right now. I have five police reports. I'm telling you right now to abusive. turn the child over to that to the sheriff so they can give them to Mr. Brown. And the judge hearing the legitimation case will hear more about where the child needs to be on a more permanent basis. Right now, turn the child over and go hire a lawyer. Quit playing with me, man. Y'all foul. Y'all court system is, is foul. Y'all real foul. Y'all real foul. Because she says she's concerned for my mental state. And the well-being massage, so it worked. Now he got... Ma'am, you should go get a lawyer. Too. You said go get a lawyer? That's what you should probably do, ma'am. One, uh, two, yeah, three, four, five, I'm, six. Yeah, my baby's getting taken They're away They're all right me, here. So, yeah. Ashley Wan, Miss Miracle, Marcy Millard, Eileen Schumann. The lawyer talked to Mike. The lawyer talked to him. Nobody talked to me, though. I didn't get a public defender. Somebody put him yeah, in the This isn't a criminal case, ma'am. This isn't a criminal case, ma'am. This is not a criminal case, ma'am. You don't have a right to a lawyer. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and remove you from this meeting. I'm going to remove you from this meeting. I'm going to remove you from this meeting. You'll get a copy of this order. 
and the defendant's motion for temporary possession of the minor child. And this hearing is being con conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney Kirsten Nemec representing the plaintiff Mother Hope Smith. Ms. Smith is present. In addition, Attorney Jason Kazmarek is present representing the defendant father, David Sizlak. Mr. Sizlak is present with Mr. Kazmarek. And for the record, the court would note that an ex parte order was entered by Judge Lohmeyer in this court's absence on April 12th, 2024, awarding defendant father temporary possession of the 12-year-old child of the parties reserving plates of mother's parenting time. <clears throat> Parties have conferred this morning with the front of the court is by the court to find recommendation that the ex parte order is to, shall be vacated. The child needs to be returned to school today immediately. The minor child shall have his phone at all times and the child shall have reasonable phone contact with both parents. Neither party shall interfere with communication between the child and the other parent. And um, this recommendation resolves all parenting time complaints through today. So presumably the prior parenting time order will would continue. Namely, father's parenting time in the first three weekends of the month, Friday at 6 to Sunday at 6, and the fourth week he has plenty of time Wednesday at 6 to Friday at 6. That's the court's recollection. Um, event, uh, Ms. Nemec, is this recommendation agreeable with your client this morning? It is, Your Honor. Well, to Mr. Kazmarek, is this recommendation agreeable with your client? It's not. Okay. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kazmarek. But that's, I mean, according to the picture board, Leon states, well, well, he's been pretty consistent that he was, he was in an argument with his mother in a, in a vehicle, that he was hit and kicked out of the car uh, by her, um, by Suter and Suter by Kroger and had to walk to his mother's house. Um, he told this both to my client and the police and mother admits that she did kick him out of the car to make him walk to cool off. They, they, there's disagreement on the location um, where he was let out of the vehicle. Um, there's also disagreement that he actually got hit. Um, I met with Leon myself. He he was pretty descriptive. Um, he, he he wants to be heard, Judge. I know he wants he wants to he'd love to talk to you. I know that probably isn't going to happen, but he he wants his voice to be heard. Um, he wants to tell the front of the court. He wants to tell somebody how he feels. Um, so after he was kicked out of the vehicle. He did walk to his mother's house uh, where they continued to argue. Um, he tried to call for help to his dad. The phone was taken um, by his grandfather um, mid recording. So he'd actually dialed the phone. His father's voicemail answered and there was a voicemail recording where he was yelling, you know what you did. He said he wanted to call his dad, that he just wanted to tell dad what happened. Uh, grandfather took his phone and grandfather kind of who lives with, the, with his mother kind of said, wah, wah, he had to walk home, big deal. So after that, Leon, the minor child says that they told him, they said, get the f out of my house is what he says. Um, he left the home um, and he, he was yelling, you can't stop me because mom was trying to get him back. Um, he had to walk into the Dollar General, which allegedly is about two miles away, called his father, pick him up. Um, Mr. Kaczmarek, meantime, the, the court, the, Mr. Kaczmarek, Rester, the court has read every piece of pleading yes. that has been filed. Yes. I understand. So, I, again, aside from that, I, I did talk to Leanne today. He's been pretty consistent. He, he doesn't, he's not comfortable at his mom's house right now, he told me. He, he just wants to be able to tell that to somebody who can express that to the court. And I know I'm probably not the right person being dad's attorney, um, but he, he would like to speak to somebody. He, he would like... I asked him what kind of parenting time he'd like with his mom. He said he didn't know, um, but I asked him, he said he'd like a therapist when I discussed that would be an option. He, he, he wants therapeutic parenting time so he can start to reconnect with his mom on a different emotional level because he, he says that they don't know how to speak anymore together. It just, he just feels kind of overwhelmed at that house with grandfather and grandmother and mother there that um, and mom, mom's at a school. He just, he, he's not comfortable and he just wants to be able to express that. Um, that's what he wants. Um, so that's what I'm asking for, Judge. All right. All right. Uh, and if uh, 
Mr. Pratt, do you think uh, there's any merit in you interviewing this minor child? Again, uh, the, 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 before I get an answer to that, we have a 12 year old boy that's that's, that's not going to drive the bus. And uh, the court believes, Mr. Cizak, you're the father. You should tell your son he needs to respect his mother. It's no different than when he's just respecting you and ignoring you, doesn't want to see you. The other parent needs to, to talk to that child and then and, and, uh, and set that child straight. It's a 12 year old, he needs his mother. And you have a big part in this whole issue here by by reinforcing and support for the relationship with his mother. That is huge. So that's uh, is just as important as counseling. Now, is the child right now in counseling at a point has identified a therapist or counselor to, uh, to repair this relationship between mom and child? Your Honor, there, the there client is. has been in counseling since 2021, but he has not attended since he's been in Mr. C. Slack's possession since March 26th. And, okay. and I know that I did talk to Ms. Smith and I, I told her to, to make the appointment and my client would get him there and I have not received any notification of an appointment. Um, but Judge, I, the, problem, the, problem with, the problem with Leon so is... Hold on, hold on. Let, let's get back in counseling. Who's got to schedule uh, the, the counseling? And whose time will be on? Dad's or mom's? I guess, Your Honor, that's dependent on what the court decides. Um, previously, it was on mom's time. Um, mom will go ahead and schedule that and get that handled. But but Leon has been with dad all of this time. Dad has the contact information and is able to schedule counseling appointments and has chosen not to. Okay. I, I've, I've, I've been asking if there's been an appointment. There's been no appointment scheduled. So when I did talk to Ms. Smith prior to Ms. Neiman coming in, she had said that there was no future appointments made. And I said, well, if there is, I will I'll make sure my client gets them there. And I've been notified if there's any appointments set, and neither of my, he is my client. Mr. Cislack had temporary possession of this child, and he had the information. So I don't understand why Mr. Cislack couldn't have scheduled that appointment. Mr. Cislack may speak for himself. Okay, the counseling is presumably during the week, correct? Dad's pretty time is primarily uh, the weekends, except the fourth week of the month. So uh, it's probably better if mom's probably better in a better position to reschedule those therapy sessions. Um, so the course can order that uh, that that therapy for the minor child to forthwith continue. What about school? He's not been in school. He, he, he Your Honor, he's not at school today. I was informed. That's correct. He's, he was he met with me in my office today. And according to Leon, he didn't want to go to school not knowing what was going to happen at the end of the day. He just, so he was he was kind of refusing to go to school because he wanted to speak to me. He wanted to speak to the court, and I told him that's not possible. He's sitting outside my office, um, but and he just he wanted to know what the plans were. He didn't because he's he's uncomfortable. He, the he plan is he's going to go to school today. Which means that if you get him to school I immediately, get I'll, done here. Should not be out of school today. And what he's been out of school for the last couple of weeks. He's missed no. nine days since um, Mr. C. Slack, since the ex parte was entered. He's missed nine days of school. Is that correct? And that Mr. does not Kazmer? include the was entered. That does not include the one week of spring break, which was also during that time frame. So outside oh, yeah. of spring break, he missed an additional nine days of school. Well, the problem, like Leon is concerned, he, this this will happen. There's, he, he's alleging domestic violence, and he, again, just the mom's kind of abandoned him, and he's being called a liar. So Leon is, he's upset. He, he sees his mom every, in three hours of school every day. He doesn't, he's uncomfortable. He, he just, and he, he's actually texted dad from the school saying that the, the administration does nothing to prevent her from walking around. He's uncomfortable. He's uncomfortable. Your Honor, I object, I object to the characterization that Ms. Smith has somehow abandoned this child. Ms. Smith disciplined this child because of the way that he was speaking to her and the, the statements that he was making in the car. She disciplined this child. Looking back, she regrets how she chose to discipline him. But in that moment, asking him to to vacate the vehicle was the only thing she could think to do. She did not hit him. No one forced him to leave the home subsequent to his returning. She has not abandoned this child. Additionally, Ms. Smith is she's not a teacher. She's an aide at his school and she's an aide in two classes that Leon is in. 
So this this characterization that he, he she's bothering him around him all day and she's abandoned him and abused him it's all absolutely incorrect. There are no CPS investigations. There are no criminal charges. Mr. Lepratt, is there any uh, any value from your standpoint in interviewing this child? Your Honor, we we will if the court directs us to. I'm I'm just not sure what I mean based off of. Mr. Kazmarek's representation, I can almost tell you what the child's going to say, whether it be right or wrong. Yep, I would agree. All right, well, obviously the, the court, Mr. Cizak, a poor uh, choice on your part not sending him to school. His, his number one job in life right now is to go to school. And you as a parent need to make sure he goes to school. That applies to both mom and dad. So the court's gonna adopt this recommendation. You shall get him to school immediately after lunch today. You go to school every day and you need to have a talk with your son. Well, that's it. that's more beneficial to him than the, the court talking to him. In front of the court talking to him, you need to talk to him and tell him that he needs to respect his mother, just like he needs to respect you as his father. Uh, he's a minor yep. child; he's twelve years old. I understand he's going through emotional problems, but his number one obligation is to go to school, not miss school. So give him to school this afternoon and to tell him that number one obligation is to pick him up after school. In a facility that he can feel comfortable, actually learn. His mother is breathing down his neck and he can't focus you're on his studies. Up, Mr. Because, we can't hear anything you're saying. You're breaking up. I'm, I'm sorry. It's the number Mr. one response. Mr. Kasmerich, do you want a custody hearing date, Mr. Kasmerich? Is that what we're going to do? No. You're going um, to testify. Do you want to hear a custody hearing date? I just got a reprimand and I can't even speak. I'm probably going to guess. All right. Put the put the device in front of Mr. Cizak, and the court will hear him out. Your, Your Honor, on December twenty third of this last year, my son had an appendix rupture, and we were in the hospital, all three of us together, for the first time as a family in six years. I was getting her blankets and coffee. We were co-parenting our child. When she needs me, I am there. When she does not want me, she alienates me and tells everybody at his school administration that I'm abusive. His counselors down in Sylvania, Ohio, believe that I'm abusive and will not even speak to me. She has done everything that she can to convince everybody that in our life that I'm an abusive father. Leon comes to me and he says, Dad, why why does everybody think you beat me? Dad, Dad, why don't you pay your child support? Dad, why isn't your why isn't your child support paid? Oh well, son, I'm on unemployment. COVID hit hard. I'm behind on some stuff, but I'm back to work now. My stuff's getting garnished. Here's that. Here's my stuff. Well, Your Honor, pretty much what's going on is I tell my son that everything is circles. Everything is circles in life, and it's going to come back for you. The rule of 10. What good you put out is coming back for you times 10. What bad you put out is coming back for you times 10. It's going to be here. Like, I teach my son these things, and his mother does what she can. It does what she can all the time to alienate me. You need to speak to my son. It's not a recommendation. It is a need. Leon needs to be heard by the family courts and by you guys. He really does. And I'm I'm sorry that I look crazy and eccentric defending my son. I know that I look insane. But the entire time we're arguing about school that she's in three of his classes with. Listen to what my son has to say about where he is and then tell me why I seem insane. Talk to my son. Not us. He, if you have my best, my son's best interest at heart, I promise you, school is his. It's it's his only priority. It is in his circle. Your circle is growing into the person that you are going to be and being happy, learning who you are, and being who you are, so you know what you want in life. We tell him these things. What she says that I say to my son. This is our adult relationship, and what I explained to him. Your mom and I can't get along. And I'm sorry about that, but that doesn't mean that you talk to her the way that I talk to her. And she tells people I'm abusive and I lose my temper with her because she tells people that I hit you. That all his school administrators, all his counselors, his counselors are under the assumption his dad is abusive. Of course, they're not going to speak to me when I go down there. What is it? Um, helping hands of Sylvania, Ohio. And I walk in and they look at me like I'm an abusive male before I even step in. It isn't fair. It's narcissistic. She, it, she's she been lying to my son since he was a child. Since he was a small... And it's, her house of cards was blown up and it is not my fault. It's not his. And then when she wanted to beat him and drop him off on Suter, they were arguing over child support. Why do you want to go to your dad's? 
Why do you even want to go over there? He doesn't Mr. even Zach, care. Were you there? Mr. Cezak, no, did you hear sir, firsthand I was that not, discussion? I understand. My son is extremely articulate. My son is extremely he's intelligent. And he's, I know he's telling you son. what you want to hear. He's telling mom what she wants to hear. But uh, what the court's going to do, the court's going to obviously conflict. The court's going to add to this recommendation. The court's going to order the both of you to complete a highconflictsolutions.com workshop. And uh, both of you do that Thank and you. write the court with a hundred word statement in terms of what you learned from that class. And we'll set this for review in about 30 days. But in the meantime, the, the court uh, that's going to adopt this recommendation, the expert's are going to be vacated. The child's going to be returned to school today. Uh, the uh, mom's parenting time is restored. And dad, you have to have that conversation with them. And if in fact, if there's still issues 30 days from now, the court will, will, will set this for a trial. If you want a full blown custody trial, and that's going to create a lot of issues for, for the relationship between you and his mother and the child. I can show you that. So I want you to both, it's called High Conflict Solutions, plural.com workshop. It's an online workshop. It'll help you uh, address some of these difficult times. So you had to have the, the discussion with your son. Let him know he's going back with his mom. If it will, fact, 100%. there's still issues in 30 days, we will set a custody hearing date. Judge, I know that one of the questions my client did ask me is, can Leon have his own attorney? And I know this court doesn't normally do that, but I'm asking if an LGAL could be appointed, um, maybe the cost be split between the parties. That is a request. If the two of you agree upon a JL, the court would have no objection to that. But again, the parties will have to share the, the cost equally or what proportion of their respective incomes. The court does not pay for that. So we're gonna give you a date to come back for review um, about, uh, Oh, June 11th or June 12th. That'll give both of you time to complete the uh, workshop and provide the court with a 100 word essay of what you learned from the class. We have June 11th at 3 o'clock or June 12th at 2.45. Um, June 12th at 2.45 would work better for me, Your Honor, Mr. Kaczmarek. Either. Either one. All right. We'll set this for review, Mr. But perhaps you can put in there the court will review these issues on June 12th at 245 p.m. Again, the court's can order to get the, the child immediately back to not only school, but also counseling. So, uh, Ms. Smith, uh, you should, when you get done here, get that appointment scheduled ASAP. Okay. Can we have the child do a preference interview? Is that is that a possibility? We're going to wait. And the court agrees with Mr. Pratt. At this point in time, he's going to say, I want to live with that. I'm sure he's going to say that. But I think if he has a he if dad has a, a genuine discussion be. with his son saying you've got to respect your mother, no, he also has to respect his father. I'd say the same thing if he was having issues with his dad right now. He's got to respect his father. He's got one mother and one father in this world. He needs his mother. And so I think that'll go a long way to restoring the parents' relationship between mother and son. But the counseling is critical for, uh, for the child. We don't even we don't even care about domestic violence allegations. We don't. Uh, there's nothing. If, it was, if I was beating my son because I had to pay child support to his mom and dropped him off on the street, there's, there should be no discussion about this case with the child. And yet she's discussing him and then hitting him over. Talk about child support. No discussion. She's, she's discussing with it with him and then hitting him over it. Your Honor, may I respond to some of the things that Mr. C. Slack is saying? Have Pope respond. <laughs> I, I attached to my motion several instances where Mr. C. Slack stated affirmatively to Ms. Smith in writing that he had shared pleadings, orders, and discussed this case with Ms. with Leon, and has stated that he he believes that Leon deserves to know that Ms. Smith is a whore. He sat in front of Leon on both Thursday and Friday of last week calling Ms. Smith names that I will not repeat on this record. He calls her a whore repeatedly, tells her to f off in front of the child. And while yeah. he did on Friday start berating Ms. Smith with disgusting language, when the minor child joined in on Mr. C Slack's abuse, he did state to the child, don't talk to her the way that I'm talking to her. Or <laughs> which is because it's not in his circle. How I speak to his mom. That's there's the nothing more damaging to a minor child than either party to talk with the child in that regard about the other parent. So no disparaging remarks about uh, the uh, other parent with the child and 
Uh, there should be no discussion of this case or any aspect of this case with the child. You simply um, tell the child that he's going to go gonna back to it. mom. All right. Well, he's going to see that. You're done. Right. He's an adult, just like I did. He's going to see that. You're going to revise recommendation. And yes, this sir. It's your cue. Uh, concluded. We we'll see everyone back June 12, 245. Thank you, Your Honor. Get me on back to school, Mr. Seaslag. Oh, oh, you can pick him up from school today, okay? Um, He is, he actually gets out at 11 o'clock today. Today was a half day. Um, And also tomorrow is a half day. They have a um, a school-wide show okay. that so they are rehearsing. Let's get Does off. Mr. Cizak know that? Mr. Nibik, you may you want to call Mr. DeCasmeric and let him know there's no school this afternoon. I don't, I'm just hearing that for the first time. Right. I'm just hearing it for the first time, Your Honor, too. So we're going to have to figure out how, hold on, hope we're going to have to figure out how to facilitate getting Leon from Mr. Cizak to Ms. Smith. I will reach out to Mr. Kazmarek and, and. Okay. Get- and if, there, if there's an issue, you can come back uh, the, the, this afternoon if we court needs to address that. Uh, we're okay. not aware of that. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Top of page two, Holmes Smith versus David Cieslak. Ms. Smith was on the court soccer this morning. The parties have returned apparently to address an issue that remains uh, outstanding that needs to be addressed. Uh, again, uh, per, the parties are appearing via Zoom. Once again, uh, Attorney Kirsten Nemec with the plaintiff of Mother Hope Smith and Attorney Jason Gaspark with defendant father David Cieslak. Ms. Anemic, Mr. Kazmarek. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Was there another issue that the court needed to address this afternoon? Yes, Your Honor. Um, if you'll recall from this morning, neither Mr. Kazmarek nor I were aware that Leon had only a half day of school today. I believe we both intended that um, Ms. Smith would just pick Leon up from school. And when we found out that that was not an option, we did attempt to reach an agreement regarding exchange uh, today. We've been unable to do that. Mr. C. Slack did offer um, Ms. Smith to come pick Leon up from his home at six o'clock tonight. Um, I declined that on behalf of my client because I don't believe that it is safe for her to go to Mr. C. Slack's home. We requested that they exchange at the police department as they normally do. Um, and, you know, we're open to times, but we would like it to occur at the police department. We what would also, department? I believe they use the Erie PD. Is that correct, Hope? Yeah, Erie Township, I believe. Yeah. Well, certainly any exchanges uh, should be at that 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 location, this location, the Erie Police Department. So the only issue being is the time. And now apparently uh, the child is not at school the only half day tomorrow as well. That is correct. correct. Okay. So, I'm ashamed because my son doesn't feel safe going to his mom's and she wants to hide behind her fear. My son is literally laying here because he was crying when I got home and now he wants to sleep because he hasn't okay, slept in weeks. Stop. Okay, three o'clock. Mr. Cieslik, I'm not going to hear yeah, you. I'll not be there at three. That, that kind of language in this my court, son's sir. Exact words you, this Mr. Cieslik, please. My life for- Mr. Kazmarek, you need to get control of your client, Mr. Kazmarek. He's not going to, the court will not permit that foul language, especially if his son is in the room. So uh, Mr. Cieslik is ordered to uh, bring the, the child to the Erie Police Department at three o'clock this afternoon. That's one hour from now. Your Honor, if I may, Ms. Smith has blocked Mr. C. Slack from communicating with her via text. Not unsafe. My son app. is unsafe. I'll be there at three. The Yourself, that Kristen. The parties use app close. Could we please it, um, include in the order that the parties use app close? So, I had suggested. I know Miss Hope had they blocked him. And I suggested they communicate together because I didn't want to have time to deal with this all day. I have a lot of other things going on. So my client suggested six. I was trying, I called Ms. Nemec three times to try to work out something. She didn't answer. My client suggested six o'clock. He had left. So I, I put that in there. She's right. declined. I said, why don't the parties communicate? She, because she has blocked him and she declined that as well. So that's where right. we're at. So I all communication for, should be by app close and only regarding the minor child. And the party shall meet at three o'clock to facilitate uh, the exchange. Um, 
Obviously, Dad's printing time starts what this this Friday, Friday at six. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I, I, know, I know from experience, I, every one of my clients has trouble connecting on AppClose. I've never had some; it'd be a smooth transition. So I don't know if they can work together to do that, but it's it's not an easy thing to connect the two clients. I've, every mm -hmm. single time I've had AppClose used, but once they connect, it's fine. But getting connected has been difficult. Okay. Every, oh, every time. Aware we're I've not heard that before, Mr. Kazmierk, so I was not aware it's difficult. And I, I had actually had this issue just at one o'clock hearing. I it was about three. I, I had to say, I haven't heard Leon where, either. Where I, mom I, and dad I, were both on it. They, they weren't connecting, and we we're trying to figure out how with the referee. And it was just, it's, it's a, it, it can be frustrating connecting themselves. The pseudo intellectual rhetorical babble of what's best for my son is unacceptable. Continue to mute me, but I'm a father and I have. My son is being abused and you're more concerned about school. Continue to. But my son is being abused and you are more concerned. Her and her safety. Unacceptable. So you if he continues this. All right. Three o'clock. One hour from now. Deliberations without listening to my. Your Honor, would it be possible for front of the court to, as soon as you've signed that order, email it to myself and Mr. Kazmierik so that Miss Smith has that when she appears? You can. Uh, well, you've not met with front of the court today, so there you can prepare an order. Email it over here, and the court will sign. I'm it. not going to get. Her, but I will speak. Okay. Continue to mute me, but I will speak best interest. I don't care. I will continue to unmute you, Your Honor, or unmute myself. This is my son's safety. This isn't his school. This isn't, this is my son's safety, and you're going to be concerned about her safety? You can call Protective Services, uh, Mr. Cizak. You've got an attorney that's very good. We, we have, I'm going you know. through Toledo. They're investigating her in Toledo still. It's a misdemeanor of domestic violence. They aren't moving, as, they don't have a detective. It's slow. I've David, been down there David, every day. David, David, just hang, David, hang on. To, to that end, Judge, I did. Uh, Miss Hope did speak with Leon via Zoom. Miss Demick and I were on that Zoom call. At, I can tell you after that, I, Miss, Mr. Cizlak was out of the room. He was outside. He wasn't even. He was in his vehicle. Um, I did speak to Leon afterwards, and he is he was pretty upset. I mean, I could I will acknowledge that, and I, I understand the court's order. I understand what's going on, and I try to try to you know. Console Leon a bit. Uh, he is, he is upset. He, he he's unhappy. He doesn't. He, he, His I exact mean, words, Your Honor, was Judge Bronlick has dictated my life for eight years, and I have never even met the man. Right. If the parents exact cannot, words, if the parents cannot, cannot raise their child, then the court's responsibility is to raise that child. Make Your Honor, decisions. you don't have to have that responsibility. Yourself, sir. My son is safe here. Agree. There, everything that that woman has told right. you is a lie about me, please and I know. Terminate this, please. Just terminate. Okay, Ms. Anemic, you can prepare an order, send it over to the court, and thus uh, Ms. Uh, friend of the court can prepare your orders for you, but they're not uh, involved this morning, this afternoon, so prepare the order, send it over, you can email it to Cindy and I'll sign it, and you can, uh, we can sign it, and you can come over and get two copies. I will do that. Thank you, Your Honor. So there you have it. And who do you think is to blame in these two situations? The mothers, the fathers, or both? In my opinion, at some point you have to accept responsibility for the individual you decided to procreate with. The only innocent ones in the situation is the children because they didn't ask to be here. But drop in the comments and let me know what you think. We're going to be covering more of these because I'm so concerned about our babies. As someone who took in her 15 year old goddaughter because her mother couldn't accept the fact that she was gay. As someone who went toe to toe with her mother because she would send the police to my house because I would let her in and wouldn't just let her 15 year old run the, roam the streets. Stuff like this bothers me because this is our future generation. These are our future leaders that they're discussing. Where's the stability? Do we even think about that when we're laying down? Can I provide a stable home for my children? I'm not telling you something I didn't first have to confront myself with. I had four children, but because I made that choice, 
I knew it was my responsibility to make sure they were okay, whether their fathers did or not. That's what it means to be a mother. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this one. Consider hitting that like button for me. Consider joining the Champagne Gang and the Fizz Fam. Hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. We have about 50 more watch hours to hit before our memberships are unlocked. I'm so excited. And I have some very exciting things in store for my members once I get those unlocked. So link up, stay attached. Make sure you pull up on tomorrow for our Wellness Waves Wednesdays where we are discussing managing your ship. It's devoted to all things relationships. So pull up so we can learn how to start the relationships right so they don't end up like this. And for those of you who are into murder mystery, I have another channel that I'm working on building up and it's devoted to all things murder mystery theater. And it's told in the tone of an old Poirot, Perry Mason story. And it deals with a lot of the unsolved cases from years ago, like old black and white noir film. So I'm gonna include an excerpt of that at the end. So don't click off just yet after we sign off. But thank you for joining me today. Confidence. Always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-ta. Gather round, shadow hunters, as we venture into the perplexing tale of the Black Dahlia, born into the mysteries of July 29, 1924 in the distant land of Hyde Park, Massachusetts. Elizabeth Short's life's journey took her across states before settling her in the heart of Los Angeles, where dreams and nightmares intertwine. It was in the year 1946 that Elizabeth's path brought her to the City of Angels, a realm of glamour and shadow. Though she sought stardom in the bright lights of Hollywood, she found herself caught in a web of intrigue and danger. Her beauty, a striking allure of dark hair and piercing eyes, captured the attention of many. But her past bore the scars of broken dreams and fleeting relationships. But fate, it seemed, had darker designs in store. On that fateful day of January 15, 1947, tragedy struck in the streets of Los Angeles. Elizabeth Short, known to the world as the Black Dahlia, was found brutally murdered, her body discovered in a vacant lot, a scene that sparked whispers of horror and foul play, whispers carried on the wind like echoes of a forgotten lament. Days passed like shadows across the sands of time until the dawn of the investigation unveiled a grim tableau. There, amidst the silence, the details of her death emerged, a macrobe masterpiece wrought in the throes of brutality. Her body, bisected and mutilated, spoke of a struggle against unseen forces that now consigned her to the realm of the departed. Yet as the authorities sought answers amidst the tangled web of evidence, doubts began to emerge like cracks in the facade of certainty. Autopsy reports spoke of head traumas and mutilation, a narrative that defied reason and left the official verdict of an unsolved mystery. Family and friends, their hearts heavy with grief, dared to challenge the silence, seeking solace in the pursuit of justice. As the tale unfolded, the media's gaze turned unyielding, casting light on every shadow every whisper of doubt. Allegation flew like arrows, accusations hurled like stones in a tempest of speculation that threatened to consume all in its wake. But amidst the chaos, a flicker of hope emerged, a glimmer of truth, perhaps, beckoning from the shadows. For in the halls of justice, 
where truth is the ultimate arbiter. The echoes of the past may yet find voice, and the mysteries of the Black Dahlia may find resolution. So grab your glass of champagne, make sure your doors are locked, and tune in, Shadow Hunters. Hit that like and subscribe so you'll be notified when we step into the Noir Syndicate to unravel this twisted tale that we call the Black Dahlia, the Damsel, and the Devil. Welcome to Inky Noir Champagne Mysteries. Thank <laughs> you.